Good night. I'm going to be sharing with you the Bible in one year. Uh, it will be Ezekiel 29 and 30, Isaiah 57, the Gospel of Mark 9, 1 to 32, and the day is 258. And this will be my final recording for today. I'll just put that on there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Michael, Archangel, defend me in this day of battle. Be much safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, I humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan, and all the wicked evil spirits, who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. O angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this night be at my side to light, to guard, to rule and guide. Amen. And before reading sacred scripture, open my heart, O Holy Spirit, to receive your inspired word. Grant me wisdom to understand what you want to teach me, and strength of will to follow wherever you lead. And we're on the evening of the 21st of June, but by the time I finish recording this and it uploads, it will be the 22nd, so I might actually leave it till tomorrow to upload and uh, just record it. And then that's half the job done. So the first reading is from Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 29, and the title is Against Egypt. In the tenth year, on the twelfth day of the tenth month, the word of Yahweh was addressed to me as follows. Son of man, Turn towards Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against the whole of Egypt. Speak and say, The Lord Yahweh says this, Look, I am against you, Pharaoh, king of Egypt. The great crocodile wallowing in his Niles, who thought, my Nile is mine, I made it. I shall put hooks through your jaws, make your Nile fish stick to your scales, and pull you out of your Niles with all your Nile fish sticking to your scales. I shall drop you in the desert with all your Nile fish. You will fall in the wilds and not be taken up. Or buried. I shall give you as food to the wild animals and the birds of heaven, and all the inhabitants of Egypt will know that I am Yahweh. For they have given no more support than a reed to the house of Israel. Wherever they grasped you, you broke their hands and cut their hands all over. Whenever they leaned on you, you broke, making all their limbs give way. So the Lord Yahweh says this, I shall send the sword against you to denude you of human and animal. Egypt will become a desolate waste, and they will know that I am Yahweh. Because, he thought, the Nile is mine, I made it. Very well, I am against you and your Niles. I shall make Egypt a waste and a desolation. From Migdol to Syene and beyond to the frontiers of Ethiopia. No human foot will pass through it. No animal foot will pass through it. 
For 40 years it will remain uninhabited. I shall make Egypt the most desolate of countries. For 40 years its cities will be the most desolate of wasted cities. And I shall scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them among the countries. The Lord Yahweh, however, says this, After forty years have passed, I shall gather the Egyptians back from the nations where they were dispersed. I shall bring the Egyptian captives back and reinstall them in the land of Pathros, in the country of their origin. There they will constitute a modest kingdom. Egypt will be the most modest kingdom of kingdoms and no longer dominate other nations, for I shall reduce it so that it will not rule other nations ever again. I will no longer be anything for the house of Israel to trust in, but will be a reminder of the guilt which lay in turning to it for help. And they will know that I am Lord Yahweh. In the 27th year, on the first day of the first month, the word of Yahweh was addressed to me as follows. Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has taken his army in a great expedition against Tyre. Their heads have all gone bald. Their shoulders are all chaffed. But even so, he has derived no profit, either for himself or for his army. From the expedition mounted against Tyre, since this is so, the Lord Yahweh says this, Look, I shall hand Egypt over to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He will carry off its riches, loot it, put it into the sack. That will be the wages for his army, as wages for the trouble he has taken. I'm giving him Egypt instead, for they have been working for me, declares the Lord Yahweh. That day I shall raise up a new stock for the house of Israel and allow you to open your mouth among them, and they will know that I am Yahweh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have to turn over in a moment to Isaiah. Excuse me a moment. I have a tickle and an annoying nose. Sorry. Excuse me. I'm going to have a sip of drink. Thank you. I'm going to continue reading Isaiah 57. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 57. The upright person perishes and no one cares. The faithful is taken off and no one takes it to heart. Yes, because of the evil times, the upright is taken off. He will enter peace and those who follow the right way up will find rest on their beds. The next title, Against Idolatry. But you... You children of a witch, come here, adulterous rate, race, prostituting yourselves 
At whom are you le jeering? At whom are you making faces and sticking out your tongues? Are you not the spawn of rebellion, a lying race? Lusting among the terebinths and under every spreading tree? Sacrificing children in the ravines, below the clefts in the rocks? The smooth stones of the ravines will be your portion. Yes, these will be your lot. To these you have poured libations, have brought your cereal offering. Can all this appease me? On a mountain high and lofty, you have put your bed. Thither too you have climbed to offer sacrifice. Behind door and doorpost you've set your reminder. Yes, far from me, you exposed yourself, climbed onto your bed and made the most of it. You struck a profitable bargain with those whose bed you love. Warring with them, whoring with them often, with your eyes on the sacred symbol. You went to Molech with oil. You were prodigal with your perfumes. You sent your envoys far afield, down to Sheol itself. Though tired by so much travelling, you never said, it is no use. Finding your strength revive, you never gave up. Who was it you dreaded and feared that you should betray me? No longer remember me and not spare a thought for me? Was I not silent for a long time? So you cannot have been afraid of me. Now I shall expose this uprightness of yours and little good it did you when you cry for help, let those thronging around you save you. The wind will carry them all away. One puff will take them off. But whoever trusts in me will inherit the country. He will own my holy mountain. The next title, Salvation for the Weak. Then it will be said, level up, level up, clear the way, remove the obstacle from my people's way. For thus says the high and exalted one who lives eternally and whose name is holy. I live in the holy heights, but I am with the contrite and humble to revive the spirit of the humble to revive the heart of the contrite. For I do not want to be forever accusing, nor always to be angry, or the spirit would fail. Under my onslaught, the souls that I myself have made, angered by his wicked cupidity, I hid and struck him in anger, but he rebelliously went the way of his choice. I saw how he behaved, but I shall heal him. I shall lead him, fill him with consolation, him and those who mourn for him, bringing praise to their lips. Peace, peace, so far and near. Yahweh says, and I shall heal him. The wicked, however, are like the restless sea that cannot be still, whose waters throw up mud and dirt. No peace, says Yahweh, for the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So now a reading from the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. 
So the Gospel is going to be chapter 9, is my understanding. Chapter 9, 1 to 32. This is the final reading for today. And he said to them, In truth, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God come with power. The title, The Transfiguration. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain on their own by themselves. There, in their presence, he was transfigured. His clothes became brilliantly white, whiter than any earthly bleacher could make them. Elijah appeared to them with Moses, and they were talking to Jesus. Then Peter spoke to Jesus. Rabbi, he said, it is wonderful for us to be here. So let us make three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. And a cloud came, covering them in shadow. And from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Then suddenly, when they looked round, they saw no one with them any more, but only Jesus. The next title, the question about Elijah. As they were coming down from the mountain, he warned them to tell no one what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They observed the warning faithfully, though among themselves they discussed what rising from the dead could mean. And they put this question to him. Why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? He said to them, Elijah is indeed first coming to set everything right again. Yet how is it that the scriptures say about the Son of Man that he must suffer grievously and be treated with contempt? But I tell you that Elijah has come and they have treated him as they pleased, just as the scriptures say about him. The Epileptic Demoniac as they were rejoining the disciples, they saw a large crowd round them and some scribes arguing with them. At once when they saw him, the whole crowd was struck with amazement and ran to greet him. And he asked them, Why are you arguing? What are you arguing about with them? A man answered him from the crowd, Master, I have brought my son to you. There is a spirit of dumbness in him, and when it takes hold of him, it throws him to the ground, and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and goes rigid. And I ask your disciples to drive it out, and they were unable to. In reply, he said to them, Faithless generation, how much longer must I be among you? 
How much longer must I put up with you? Bring him to me. They brought the boy to him. And at once the spirit of dumbness threw the boy into convulsions and he fell to the ground and lay writhing there foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the father, How long has this been happening to him? From childhood, he said, and it has often thrown him into the fire and into the water in order to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have pity on us and help us, if you can. Retorted Jesus, everything is possible for one who has faith. At once the father of the boy cried out, I have faith, help my lack of faith. And when Jesus saw that a crowd was gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit. Deaf and dumb spirit, he said, I command you come out of him and never enter him again. Then it threw the boy into violent convulsions and came out shouting. And the boy lay there so like a corpse that most of them said, He's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him up, and he was able to stand. When he had gone indoors, his disciples asked him when they were by themselves, Why were we unable to drive it out? He answered, This is the kind that can be driven out only by prayer. The second prophecy of the Passion. After leaving that place, they made their way through Galilee, and he said he did not want anyone to know, because he was instructing his disciples, he was telling them, the Son of Man will be delivered into the power of men. They will put him to death. And three days after he has been put to death, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he said. And they were afraid to ask him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for listening. May God bless you and heal you. I'm sending you his peace in abundance. And may you always be happy and joyful in the Lord. God bless you and have a good night and the rest of your week. And I hope to get through as much as the Bible is possible. So that if I'm doing less next week, you won't worry. You'll have plenty still to look at. Um, listen to, sorry. After reading sacred scripture, I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the word you've spoken to me through the treasure of the scripture. Make these words a living reality in my life, a constant guide, a lamp for my feet, and a light to my path. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your comments. Wishing you joy, peace, happiness. And let's pray for what is happening in Ukraine, that it will stop immediately. No more money, no more weapons. We don't need war. We need peace. The world needs peace. Ask the Lord to touch everyone who can make a difference. God bless you all. Bye-bye.